Nickelodeon. Home to beloved shows like SpongeBob, The Fairly Odd Parents, Drake and Josh, Wendell and Vinny, anyone? Now I grew up with Nickelodeon, it's probably one of my favorite networks of all time. It's always a tie between that and Cartoon Network. And while I will say that 99% of my memories of Nickelodeon are positive ones, there is that 1% that it never goes away. Now hey, nobody's perfect, we all make mistakes, and TV networks, they're no different. You know, like canceling Wendell and Vinny. And so today I want to talk about kind of the worst programming that Nickelodeon has ever done. Shows or programs or blocks that just make you think, why? We had it all. It was so perfect. Why'd you have to go and ruin it? So yeah, I hope you can uh, join me and have a fun time as we talk about the worst Nickelodeon programs ever. Although now I'm gonna be afraid to go to sleep at night. Luckily though, we have today's sponsor, Manta Sleep. Whether you're afraid of the monsters or just enjoy a good nap, Manta Sleep provides the best sleep masks out there. This thing is super comfortable on the face. They didn't cheap out with the material at all. A premium feel that's super adjustable to fit your comfortability. I've used a good bit of sleep masks throughout my life and this one is easily the best, mainly because of the variety. They got weighted masks, masks that play music via Bluetooth, and the one I got specifically was the Cool Sleep Mask. Cold therapy that feels so good on my eyes. Man, this plus a cold pillow? I can't imagine a more comfortable night. So hey, whether you want a great night's sleep or midday nap, then click that link down below and use the code CTW for 10% off your order. Thanks again Manta Sleep for sponsoring this video and helping me feel safe from the monsters. Now this first one, maybe I'm a bit biased. Nick News. As you might expect, this was the news on Nickelodeon. Oh my god, it's a virus! It's a virus! Think of a computer virus the way you think of any virus that infects your body. Now, I'm willing to bet that there's probably someone out there who enjoyed Nick News, who, whenever it came on TV, they were happy, they were excited. They thought to themselves, thank god that stupid SpongeBob crap is over, I can finally catch up on economics. Who was this for? If you're a kid, you probably watch a lot of television. But did you know that in just one hour, you might end up seeing 25 acts of violence on TV? What? I have never met a single child who cared about the news. And on Nickelodeon. I mean Here is what happened on September 11th, 2001. So Nick News was hosted by Linda Ellerby, which I don't even know who this is, I'm sure she's a great person, but just because I had to deal with years and years of seeing her face interrupt my Sundays to talk about the war, I grew to hate her. Oh, well I uh, found a picture of her from 1978, I take back everything I said, I, I always loved Linda Ellerby. Now to be fair, they did try to make Nick News interesting. But what will stop people from creating viruses? Creating viruses is not a good thing because one, the virus can go onto your computer and then you get it. You know, she wore jeans, she was cool, she was she was chilling, you know, like she's she's one of us, she's one of the kids talking about the news. But it, it just felt like you were in school. And that was probably the biggest problem with me, was that Nick News aired Sunday nights like seven o'clock or so, like right before bedtime. This is your last few minutes, last few hours of salvation and being a child, getting to enjoy the weekend. And instead it gets muddled with the news. And this wasn't just like child friendly news. It wasn't just propaganda and fluff pieces talking about kids doing projects and helping the environment. Like there was some of that, sure. But she covered things like 9-11, I heard that on 9-11, 500 planes disappeared in the air. Yes, 9-11 is canon in the Nickelodeon universe. Now to be fair, again, I never gave Nick News a fair shot. I saw it on and would immediately change the channel. There was no way I was gonna sit through an hour of 9-11. And I'm not even like trying to be mean. Like I'm pretty sure Linda Ellaby works hard. Especially, I know she does, because according to Wikipedia, Nick News is still going on. All right, so I opened up the Wikipedia and it says, on June 23rd, 2020, Nickelodeon announced that it would be reviving Nick News in a series of hour long specials. The first installment titles, Kids, Race, and Unity. You have the right to be seen, heard, and respected. 
accepted as a citizen of the world. That is so crazy. They were gone for so long and they came crashing back to tackle racism. It is, th that does take balls, I will admit. So hey, while they did do some great things, I'm not gonna say that it was a totally useless show that shouldn't have existed, like other programs we're gonna talk about, but for a personal vendetta from me and ruining my Sundays, I'm sorry, Nick News. I hate you. When it comes down to it, you are the most interesting people we know. This is Nick News. If you want to know, ask. All right, here's something that I don't feel bad for hating on. This is the Nickelodeon Worldwide Day of Play. It's Nickelodeon's Worldwide Day of Play. We're getting out and getting active, and you should be too. We'll be back in three. Now there were two different iterations of the show that I remember. The first one was they would stop showing TV shows and instead just show kids outside playing. That, that's all it was. Look at all these kids doing activities. I think it was meant to turn you off and be like, I'm not watching this. I would rather go outside and play. Which, you know, didn't work. No man, ain't nobody go outside and play because Nickelodeon said to. They invented a fake holiday. It's no different than National Waffle Day. Nobody gives me $10 on National Waffle Day. It's just, it's a made up holiday. Now while that was kind of annoying, what was worse? was when they would just straight up not do anything. They would have a black screen with the logo of Nickelodeon National Worldwide Day of Play. And occasionally, every 30 seconds, you would get a guy in his voiceover being like, Nickelodeon is not showing any programs today. You should go outside and play. This is so stupid because unless you live in like California where it's 99% sunny all the time, what if it's raining? Worldwide Day of Play. Nickelodeon has gone off the air and is out to play which is where you should be. Tell your family, get your friends, grab your dog, and... So yeah, uh, that didn't work, and I don't know why Nickelodeon thought they had the monopoly on children's entertainment, because whenever the Worldwide Day of Play was happening, all you'd have to do is pick up the remote and go to Cartoon Network. They weren't doing that. You know, turning off SpongeBob is not going to motivate me to go for a run. Now, just like Nick News, this thing is like a cockroach and refused to die. It started off in 2004 and went on until 2023, which is like even more insane because you already don't have a lot of people watching TV nowadays, right? They're all on YouTube and the internet and you can't block the internet. Like I could just watch YouTube videos all day. So the fact that they were still taking what little TV viewer base they had and still subjecting them to the... This is Nickelodeon's celebration of all things active, an entire day devoted to play. It is insane that they were doing that. However, they would usually, like, reward you for making you suffer. At the end of the Nickelodeon day of play, whenever they would start resuming TV shows, they would usually air a new episode or debut a brand new TV show as kind of like an apology. They were like, hey, sorry we made you go outside and play in the hurricane. I don't know a single person whose life was changed because of the Nickelodeon Worldwide Day of Play. Let me know, did you go outside? Did you, did you have a fun time? Did, were you inspired to turn off the TV? I doubt it. Okay, so this video was pretty much like done, and then I saw Chad Tronic talk about something that I've never heard of in my life, and I was, I had to di di dive deeper into it. Nick, mom? We know your day was hard. Work. Laundry, snacks, timeouts, diapers, dishes. You already know how funny motherhood can be. Join the conversation. So this apparently aired from 2012 to 2015. It was essentially like Nickelodeon's attempt at Adult Swim, despite Nickelodeon already having adult programming in Nick at Night. There were apparently over 30 projects being worked on for this thing. It was meant to aim specifically though at teen moms. Teen dads, I, I don't know. I guess they just expected you to work in the oil fields for 24 hours and not watch TV. The programs were, to say the least. And this is really embarrassing, but I got pregnant by my own husband. <laughs> what a dork. I am so dorky, right? Cringe. One time I was making love to my husband, but all I could hear in my brain was the wheels on the bus go round and round. Just do women's comedy stuff, you know, talk about how fat you are and how you want to have sex with guys and then say, my vagina a lot.
Yup, cringe, cringe, cringe. There were stand-up comedy shows. There were sitcoms, if you will. Wow, this is awesome. I don't know why my mom thinks your mom is cheap. They were all just so, so terrible and so unfunny. Like, I don't mean to be a hater of white women comedy, but... And then I found myself 40, divorced, with kids, and men my age didn't want to date women my age. And that's just the kind of sexist bullcrap that's going to keep you in the kitchen. Sit your ass down. It's just like, it's just the same jokes. It's the same show. Everything. They had bumpers. They had sitcoms. They had stand-up shows. They had commercials. It was just a woman being unfunny. Now, if you think this is all cringe and there's no way it could get any worse, it kind of does. Because Nick Mom aired on Nick Jr. Yeah, and I like to think my stretch marks make me ribbed for extra pleasure. Yeah, in 2012, Nick Jr. got its own channel as opposed to just being on regular Nickelodeon and early in the morning. It was an all-day thing, right? 3 p.m. rolls around. You could still watch Yo Gabba Gabba. However, at 10 p.m., just like Adult Swim, the programming would change. They would say, okay, go to bed, and they would show you Nick Mom. Now, this also caused more problems. Let me read this to you, okay? The timing of Nick Mom generated some controversy, as the Nick Jr. channel only operated a single feed out of the Eastern Time Zone. So the channel transitioned into its adult-oriented shows earlier than expected in other time zones. So New York, it's 10 o'clock, right? But if you live in California, on the other side of the country, it's now 7 o'clock. So while it is late over here, over here, it's still kind of early, and you might be having a kid sitting down watching Blue's Clues, and he's having a great time, and then all of a sudden... Oh man, time to get bigger boobs. Moms who weren't like that, aka anyone but boring white moms, they found that to be not cool. Then Morgan's two and a half year old asked her... Ma, what's up? What's an orgasm? Morgan says she heard it on TV. It's just so weird. Like, Adult Swim is kind of meant for everyone, right? Teenagers can like it. Adults, adult women, adult men. But Nick Mom was specifically designed for young moms. I am kidding. I am not a lesbian. I'm not. I'm just trying to sound like one of those cool modern moms, right? It is such a niche thing. And I, I've never even heard of any of these shows. Here, I, I, let me look it up. Nick Mom Night Out. MFF Mom Friends Forever, Parental Discretion with Stephanie Wilder Taylor. If you're a young mom, there's a good chance you don't care. You've had enough TV, especially Nickelodeon. You're not turning to Nick Jr. for your entertainment. I just, I refuse to believe any mom was into this. At least they're making somebody else suffer, right? Like before it was kids, Nick News, Go Worldwide Day of Play, that affected children. But Nick Mom, that was only, only women that were affected by that. In addition to Morgan's Facebook page, there are about a dozen other anti-Nick Mom Facebook pages, a website, a Twitter account, and two online petitions with more than 3,000 signatures. So the fact that they found it appropriate to like air raunchy things, and that's the problem, it was too raunchy. They didn't have like buffer shows. Like when you watch Adult Swim, usually the first thing they show is like King of the Hill. It's a very calm show it's adult oriented but it's not gonna say or do anything like crazy offensive she is my best friend in the world but judy and i are married in every sense except sex it's insane because i have never heard of this i've heard of a lot of garbage see you there without the kids it was just so unfunny that that's the best way to describe it being unfunny and uninteresting is worse than being the news it's worse than just telling kids to go outside and play and it's just so zero use zero purpose but now i've saved the worst for last the worst thing in my opinion that nickelodeon has ever done the worst thing that maybe any tv network has ever done in the history of television and i'm not even exaggerating this is nick studio 10. Sitting alone when I thought to myself, why don't I fart in a jar and put it on the shelf? They were commercial bumpers, right? It, they wanted to have commercial bumpers with personality. So they created this group called Nick Studio 10. It was like their hype house because YouTubers were kind of becoming popular at this point. Now on their own, they're not funny. It's a paddle with an egg on the end. Awesome. Extreme. Excellent. I want to buy a dozen. I understand that they're kids, right? But kids, 
someone's got to break your dreams first. Someone's got to be the first one to do it. And I definitely was not the first, but I will gladly do it all these years later so you never forget. These kids were so unfunny. They were given unfunny material and they didn't make it work. My best fashion tip is to always wear pants. You, you should wear pants always. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. During commercials, it was fine. It was random skits, right? Fart in a jar. It was all just the epic random funny humor because it was the early 2010s. My favorite day of the week is a Wednesday because that's in the middle of the week when people are really tired and I love to just fuck them up. It was just garbage. It sucked to see. They felt like it dragged on forever and ever. They had no idea what they were doing. But what's worse was that they would show up during regular programming and they would do it in the worst way possible. And for dessert, cream poof. The following is an important announcement. Stretch and reach. Stretch and reach. This concludes your important announcement. Look, the baby's still asleep. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Nickelodeon would air their regular programs, right? You're watching The Fairly Odd Parents. And then, at some point, Nick Studio 10 ra The following is an important announcement. <laughs> Nick did it! Your show. But they wouldn't show the 5 to 10 seconds that they cut out. Why would you do that? What if it's somebody's first time watching this show? Like the fact that you thought it was funny to be like, we now interrupt your program for some epic funny humor. And then they're like, okay, back to your show. But also we, we didn't restore the 10 seconds you missed out. You should know what happens by now, right? No, Johnny, don't do it. The following is an important announcement. Nick did it. Nick did it and Nick didn't just do that. It's an edit. Goodbye and uh... I'll see you next time for our next video. Ugh, it was so bad. They were like sabotaging their own network. They were sabotaging their own shows with their unfunny garbage. It blows my mind. This was 2013. They made their debut in 2013 and it came to an end in 2013. Nick Studio 10 ran from February to July 2013. That's like five months, bro. You couldn't even last a year. And it makes sense. You lasted five months and so many people hated this. And again, at this time, TV and the internet, it was slowly starting to tip in the internet's favor, right? You needed people to stick around. What, what were we gonna do? What could we do to have people not go on YouTube and stay on our channel? Do we make great TV shows and cartoons that you can only watch? It's a fart in a job. Just a fart in a job. No, we instead create intrusive garbage that's gonna turn you away i have no clue what they were thinking it is insane the stupid choices that were made during this time you could find internet threads just trashing on this this was like the 9-11 that linda ellerby could have covered on nickelodeon it was it was that bad it's old people who don't fully understand what's popular or what the young kids like. They're like, oh, the young kids like the internet and LOL epic random cat videos? We can do that. The following is an important announcement. Zero people liked it. That's the great thing. With Nick News, I can see people liking it. Worldwide Day of Play, maybe some parents found it useful. Nick Mom, there's one sad woman out there who loved that. But with this, zero people liked it. And in my opinion, those are just some of the worst Nickelodeon programs that ever exist. I wanted to mainly focus on broader things, not like little TV shows that I didn't like. Things that actively made me not want to watch Nickelodeon. These were things that Nickelodeon just were irredeemable for. Things that I was like, how am I not gonna just watch Cartoon Network instead? Cartoon Network doesn't make me go outside. Their adult programmings are cool. You know what I'm saying? It's, I always wanted to believe Nickelodeon was the best. Something about it deep down. I always wanted to prefer Nickelodeon more than Cartoon Network. But it was times like these where you couldn't defend it. <laughs> you just had to be like, yeah, that does suck. So hey, let me know down below. Did you enjoy these shows? Were there other programs that I didn't mention that you probably hated too? Let me know and uh, thank you so much for watching. Now it's time for so long.